In this video, we will talk about how ionic bonds form in a bit more detail than before, and I'll show you how to calculate the amount of energy change. We'll calculate the energy of ionic bond formation given the necessary ionization energy, electron affinity, and attraction of the plus minus ions. And we'll use a visual picture to imagine this. We'll determine if forming an ionic bond is exothermic and, depend and determine if forming an ionic bond is energetically favorable. First, we need to talk about energy transfers. And to do that, we'll talk about signs. Whenever we are talking about energy transfer, we need to know if the energy is coming into or out of the system. Think about a bank account. As an analogy to help you remember, if you put money into the bank account, the change is positive. If you take money out, the change is negative. This is identical to what happens with energy as related to the system. If energy is put into the system, the change is positive, and we call that endothermic. Of course, the opposite is true too. If energy is removed from the system, the energy change is negative, and we call that exothermic. In this situation, our system is the two ions making up the bond, and the surroundings is anything else. So if either of the ions or atoms absorb energy, the energy is positive. If either of them emit energy, the energy change is negative. This involves using electron affinity or gaining an electron, ionization energy or losing an electron, lattice energy, and if necessary, the enthalpy required to get to a single element. Now let's zoom in on each one of these steps. We'll use sodium chloride as our example. The three parts include first ionizing from Na to Na+, then giving, giving an electron to chlorine to form chlorine minus, and then seeing how much energy comes from the plus and minus attracting each other. We'll start with the ionization energy. In order to form an ionic bond, sodium must become a plus charge. As we've learned about previously, there is an energy called ionization energy that describes this. For sodium, that ionization energy that we can find in a table is 494 kilojoules per mole. And that's a positive value because you have to put in energy. For the next part of the process, we have to talk about chlorine. This is actually a two-step process because chlorine is a diatomic molecule and so we need to split it in half. But we only need one molecule of chlorine. And so we actually need to just use one half of the energy it takes to split a chlorine molecule. So if you look this up in the tables, it's going to say 119.6. And so we actually have to divide that by two to get just one chlorine's enthalpy. That takes energy to do, and so it's a positive value. Now we can do the next part which is chlorine must gain an electron to become chlorine minus. As you remember from previous chapters, this is called electron affinity. For chlorine, that's negative 349 kilojoules per mole. Notice this is a negative value, meaning that energy is released when it happens. For the final step, the positive and negative ion are going to attract each other. This also changes the energy and is called the lattice energy. In this case, it changes by a negative 787 kilojoules per mole because they are attracted to each other. So this negative means that energy is released. Now that we've figured out the energy of each of these three to four parts, we can add them together to get the total energy change. If the energy is lower, this means that it's more stable and is exothermic. If these were to add in a way that made it positive, that would make it an endothermic process because it's taking energy in. So here we can see the total value is negative 522. It's a negative value, therefore it is exothermic. In summary, we've calculated the energy of ionic bond formation given the necessary ionization energy, electron affinity, and attraction of the plus minus ions. We've determined if forming an ionic bond is exothermic or endothermic, and determined whether forming an ionic bond is energetically favorable. Both of these last two are based on the positive or negative value that comes out of doing the first step.